Right, uh, that's Mr. Palmer here with another video on computer science. So I just flicking for yep, check in. So before you go over this video, make sure you go over your notes on uh, von Neumann architecture and low level languages. So this one's uh, looking at instructions um, in low level languages and how they are basically carried out by the CPU. So looking at what is assembler and what types of instructions can be given. So first of all, what is an instruction set? So these are the instructions that are understood by a CPU. They are expressed in binary because that's the language that computers understand all right uh, instructions that's a unique to a CPU architecture or family so every uh, CPU will have its own instruction set uh, a particular architecture may have an instruction set uh, for example x86 um, so that's why you have different processes created by different companies of the same architecture still running the same software e.g. Windows uh, now uh, if you remember back, you will remember that uh, an instruction uh, is made of uh, opcodes. Okay, so these are the codes that represent the operation that can be carried out by the CPU. Um, clearly, operation and code joined together creates the word opcode. All right, this is uh, the partial instruction set for an Intel 8085 processor. So you can see on the left hand side on the table the binary opcodes, and on the right hand side there's a description of what that uh, instruction. Uh, carries out. So if you uh, cast your mind back, you will also remember that the instruction is made of two things an opcode and an operand. The opcode being the instruction and the operand being the data or the address that um, the, de the instruction refers to. So uh, the doesn't necessarily have to be uh, uh, one operand. Okay, so the operand doesn't is not always the second part of the instruction. It can also sometimes be the third part. You can have two operands. Okay, and then usually it points out the address where the data is located, not the actual data itself, because the operand might be too short for um, uh, the the data. Uh, so here's an example instruction where you have the most significant bit on the left hand side and least significant bit on the right hand side, and so you've got the eight bit opcode and then you've got sixteen bit of operand uh, at the end of it bit difficult for us as humans to understand all right so that's why we use mnemonics so this is where assembly language comes into play because uh, to for humans to code in binary is uh, a little bit difficult we could turn it into hex okay so zero zero one 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 zero one zero uh, corresponds to the a hex of uh, hexadecimal 3a bit more easier to understand still difficult when you got to remember hex codes and remember where everything needs to be uh, what everything is okay so this here's a symbolic representation in hex of that same instruction easier to understand yet still not easy that's why we use mnemonics so we're creating human uh, humanly readable instructions okay so that for example code of 3a corresponds to a mnemonic of LDA so if I was now coding in assembler writing a program in assembler instead of writing the binary code or the hex I could just remember the mnemonic LDA with the operand AC52 in um, in hex, okay. That being the operand, being the memory AC52, the uh, uh, address where the uh, data is located. Now, um, if you compare again that uh, instruction set, you will see the binary compared to the opcode compared to the mnemonic. Uh, it's much much easier to understand. So if you're reading uh, a program written in assembler made up of mnemonics, it's much much easier for humans to understand. Now. Uh, there are different types of instruction, okay, three that you need to think about. The first one is an arithmetic operation. So this is where if you think about the fetch decode execute cycle, uh, the, the instruction comes in, the opcode is decoded, the data is fetched into the memory data register from the primary memory, okay, the operation is performed in the arithmetic and logic unit, and then the result is temporarily stored in the accumulator, okay, and then another instruction will come along and then tell the uh, the CPU what to do with that data in the accumulator go put it in another register go store it at this address in the RAM etc okay the second type of instruction we want to think about is our instructions where you move data in and out of memory where you get store move load etc so we are getting data from memory or we are taking it out of the CPU and putting it back into main memory all right these as you can see again these mnemonics make it easy if you're writing assembler you can use these to write a program as opposed to trying to write actual machine code. Now the third type of instruction is flow control. 
if you think about it, programs just aren't written in a, in a sequence, okay? We've got selection, where we're branching, we've got iteration, we're going to go around and repeat. If we've got subroutines, we need to jump to a particular set of instructions, carry them out, return again, okay? So, for example, um, I've got my uh, my memory boxes here on the right left hand right hand side, okay? Where um, I've got all these different memory addresses, uh, which I'm referring to by in their hex form, okay? And my program counter is currently storing uh, AC52. Okay, that's the instruction that needs to be executed. So, the uh, whatever's in AC52 is copied to the instruction register. So that's the uh, instruction. There it is. C3 is the opcode. AF53 hex is the uh, address, the operand. Okay, and then my uh, normal execution. We would assume that in sequence we're going to move from AC52. The next instruction is in AC53. So the program counter is incremented. However, when C3 is uh, interpreted, it is a jump command. So we need to jump to the what's in the memory location AF53. So the program counter needs to be incremented because we are not, sorry, the program counter needs to be forced to a new value because we're not going to be going to the next one along AC53. We're supposed to be jumping down to AF53. And so the value of the program counter can be changed, okay? And this is how a jump this is the simplest form, it's never as simple as this, okay? But in essence, this is the kind of principles of what's being carried out. So you've got the three types of instruction there. The arithmetic, okay, the uh the, the memory management ones where you're moving, loading, storing, okay, and then you've got flow control. Right? And remember that all of these programs are easy to uh, understand as humans because we write them in assembler so we can use mnemonics to understand the binary codes. Okay, um, that's the end of this program. Uh, this little video. The next one coming along is just a uh, well. You can watch the next video and you'll see what it's about. Following on the topic of low-level languages, oh, and we are going to here we go.